Hi. Hi. My son, Ricky. Okay, your first name again? Carrie. Carrie. And your son, Ricky? Ricky. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm still disconnecting from him. Takes, <laughs> takes a minute sometimes. They don't know how to disconnect because they want to listen in still. And I have to kind of say you can still listen without holding on to me. Okay. 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 Um, the first two words that came out attached to him were beautiful boy. Okay. That's kind of how he was referencing how you see him. You understand? Okay. He kept showing the number 17. Did he make it past 17? 18. Okay. 17 is his version of heaven because it's when things were still okay. It's when you didn't have to cry. 17. Okay. It was his last year that was okay and untouched by death. 18 was touched by death. Do you understand what he's saying? Okay. He's funny, great smile, um, but he's saying he's growing his hair out. So he just wants you to know like, that he's got his like, mop going now, okay? <laughs> he also says it was hard for him to breathe, that he couldn't breathe when he passed. And he, but he doesn't want you to worry about him. He doesn't feel that way anymore. But he's just saying he just couldn't draw breath, like he just couldn't breathe. He's not telling me how he passed, just how he felt. You understand? Yes. Okay. He does say that your world revolved around him, like he was your world. And when he left it, it was like everything good left it. He's sorry about that. He says he knows it wasn't fair. <sighs> he says, my mom will go to the ends of the earth to make sure I'm not forgotten. So that means you're doing things to memorialize him or so that people don't forget him. He says you're strong, he says, and you have a lot of energy. <laughs> he loves that about you. He says you were always so young inside so he could relate to you. And you were like friends. You were, you were son and mom, but you were friends. Like he could talk to you about anything. And he's saying he felt really lucky. He also says you were the mom that all the other guys were like wanted to be around or come over to your house. Because he's saying their moms weren't quite as understanding. Okay. Um, he keeps showing himself on the beach. I don't know, maybe there's pictures of him on the beach where he was having a good time on a vacation or with you, but he keeps talking about the pictures on the beach and to take them out, okay? <laughs> he says he was a talented guy. He could do a little of everything. Like anything he tried, he could be good at, you know? He says you taught him a lot, and he wants you to remember that you were like the best teacher in life that he could have had. Okay, that was important to him um, that if he came to you with a problem, you would research it or move heaven and earth to try and fix it. So he's just saying thank you. And this, I don't know that this is going to make sense, but I have to say it because he keeps showing it. He keeps showing like a pug or some funny kind of looking dog. And so I don't know if his friend's got one and it knows when he's around, but he keeps referencing it. So maybe talk to his buddies and see if one of them got a pug. Okay. Do you, you, oh, my sister just named a dog after him. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's nice. <laughs> It's like he wants to go on vacation with you, and I know this sounds strange, but like he's trying to take you to Hawaii, like to watch the surfers and to like just hang out, but he's trying to take you on vacation. Again, they're good at spending our money. He's trying to get you to go places, you know, places you've wanted to go and not stay in one spot. He says it's not like you. That's not where you belong. <sighs> 
Well, then I don't know what this is going to mean because he's saying he's not the only Ricky or the, like his name times two, but I would have thought it would have been a person, but maybe it's the dog then that has his name. My dad. Oh, your dad. Okay, good. <laughs> that would have been a first. Um, so he, he's around his namesake. So he's just My letting. My dad. Okay. So he thought you would need to know that, okay, that they're around each other. Okay. Can I ask you when your dad died? Two months before he did. I thought they died in close proximity. That's why it's important for you to know that they're together, okay? It's just your son's way of taking care of you. I'm sorry you had to have that year in your lifetime. That's bad. He says he's a lot of fun, though. He likes hanging out with your dad. He says he has a lot of good stories, okay? He wants you to take out pictures of your dad around the age of 35. He says that was his version of heaven, okay? And then he talks about matching jewelry. So I don't know if the family members are getting matching jewelry for him, but he likes it. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes. Okay. He says, tell everybody he loves them and that he's not gone. And he hears them talk about him, you know? And, it's hard for him. He doesn't like to be talked about like he's not here anymore, so he struggles with that, okay? He's still a part of the family. And he plays with the lights all the time to let people know he's around, so he says, tell everybody to stop asking for signs. I've sent them, <laughs> okay? Okay. <laughs> he really likes Halloween, too, so I don't know if there's some good Halloween pictures of him, but you might take some of those out. That's like an exciting time of year for him, a fun time. And so he doesn't want it to be a sad time, and I don't know why that would be a sad time, but he doesn't want it to be, okay? <laughs> he was surprised at how many people were his age that were destroyed when he died. He says he saw that. He says it was awful to watch them cry, and he's sorry. He says, but he left you with some friends that carry some of his energy, so he says they'll check on you throughout your life. You know, they won't go anywhere. And he says it's going to be hard. You're going to see them get married and have kids. He says it's not going to be easy, but he'll be there. And he doesn't want you to think of the things he didn't get to do. He wants you to think of all the things he did, okay? And he says, no more surprises. You don't have to worry about losing anybody for a long time. Okay? He says he likes his room. I don't know if you kept his room or if there's a room that just has all of his stuff in it, but he says he likes his room. Did you keep, like, a wall for him in the room or? I just moved and I put all his stuff in a room. Okay. He likes his room. That's his room, and that's where he is every night. So you can talk to him, okay? Whew. Okay. He says it's going to be all right. He says he has plenty of things that he left for you to find that you haven't found of his, and you'll find them little by little, and it's his way of letting you know that he's there on days that are hard for you. This feels like things that he co collected when he went on little trips with his friends, like little mementos that you're just going to keep stumbling across. But he says he's really good at coming through with signs, so he's not worried. He says he strokes your hair at night when you're trying to sleep, like you did with him when he was little. So he tries to comfort you that way. Okay. He says he loves you. He pinky swears he'll never leave. And he knows how much you love him. He loves you more, he says. Okay? Okay. I'm going to break my connection with him and send him with you. Ah.